Imagine tomorrow is your 100th birthday. How will you celebrate it? For some people, 100 years is not a limitation to thrive and excel regardless of their chronological age. We are entering an era where advancements in technology, healthcare, and a greater understanding of human potential are breaking the barriers of age-related limitations for physical and mental abilities. The first question that emerged is, why would I want to live so long? And this is of course personal for everyone, and maybe some people want to have multiple careers. You just want to spend more time with your family, you want to see your grandkids grow up. or you just enjoy every day of your life, which I hope is not for everyone. But for many people would say, oh, yeah, maybe I want to live to 100, but I've seen my great grandmother and her last five or 10 years were not so good. I don't want to live like that. What if I tell you there's a lot of people working hard every day right now to understand why we age, how we age, how can we slow it down and even how to reverse it? The question is, would you do everything you can do now to maybe even live more than a hundred and to be as strong and vital as you are right now? We are getting closer every day to exponentially extend the lifespan and health span of humans. Let's first get into Italy. It does not only have one of the most beautiful beaches and cities in the world, but it holds one place where people live the longest. And together with countries like Costa Rica or Greece or Japan, there's pockets in these countries where people live the longest regardless of their ethnical background. Maybe there is something they're doing right and we can learn a lot from them. These places are known as the Blue Zones. The field of longevity has expanded with anthropologists working on the field trying to understand what people do in these regions and scientists in the labs trying to understand aging and disease. Overlooked component of longevity is health span. And health span is quality of life. And that's much harder. I want to talk about a graphical way that we can represent longevity. And the way that we can do it most easily is to consider the two age-dependent drivers of health span, cognition and physical performance, on the vertical axis here, while considering lifespan on the horizontal axis here. So let's start by turning our attention to the white line. The white line represents what happens without much of an intervention as a person ages. So a person is born here at time zero, and if you follow the trajectory of their graph, what's happening is as it's moving to the right, you're gaining chronologic years. And as it's coming down, the quality of your life is declining, such that when the line crosses the horizontal axis, a person is literally dead. The blue line represents what I believe the best medicine has to offer, which is to say, initially, it really follows the same curve as the white line. But just as you're about to near the end of life, it comes in and manages to delay death by some period of time. Using amazing and heroic tools of medicine, it manages to postpone death by potentially a few years or more, but often without any improvement in the quality of life. Finally, I'd like you to imagine the red line. The red line you can see increases the length of life, though not logarithmically. It certainly isn't a science fiction extension of life. What most stands out in the red line is the way in which it reduces the decline of health span and compresses the period of decline. The first thing that we need to realize is that no one dies of old age. Rather, there's a specific condition or event which leads to death. For this reason, we need to know what are the major causes of death. 
And as doctoratia or in people in general like to describe them, we first have these fast causes of death. And the most common ones are accidents, injuries, or infections. So this usually affects people at any age, any moment in life. Some are preventable and some not. But if you're lucky enough not to die from one of the first causes of death, most likely it will be a slow death. What does that mean? And these are usually the chronic diseases, those that develop at some point in life and progressively they get worse until they kill the patient. And at the, at the moment people get older, the more of these diseases are present. So the longer you can prevent the onset of these diseases or conditions, the longer people can live. The first one is heart disease or cardiovascular diseases. In the last years, it has been possible to detect the early onset of heart disease to be able to prevent it and delay heart disease causes of death. The second major killer is cancer. And if you're lucky not to get cancer when you're a child, most likely people will develop cancer very late in their lives. And depending on which type of cancer, some are treatable and some are not as much yet. Another one is neurodegenerative diseases. For example, Alzheimer or dementia. This usually develop later in life and has one of the stronger effects on decreasing the quality of life and the health span of people. And lastly, diabetes or metabolic dysfunction is another one that can develop at any point in life and also involve a lot in the genetics and the lifestyle choices of the individuals. So the more we can prevent and delay the onset of chronic diseases, the longer people can live. What many people ignore is that the field of aging and longevity is actually a well-studied scientific discipline. This year, there was a publication that characterized the hallmarks of aging. And there are 12 of them, and they are divided in three groups. The primary, which is basically what's happening inside the cell. So, for example, genomic instability or epigenetic alteration of or loss of proteostasis, which is how the proteins are working. So we can think about here are how across time inside the cells, the DNA and the proteins and the other macromolecules accumulate a lot of damage. Then we have processes that are defined as antagonistic, which is how the cell respond to these damages. We have, for example, cellular senescence. What happens is the cells, after accumulation of a lot of damage or different processes, they just stop dividing while in certain occasions it could be good for the cells because they prevent formation of cancer for example and accumulation of a lot of senescent cells will end up damaging the tissue around or preventing certain functions to be renewed and then we have integrative damage like stem cell exhaustion then if the cells are not grown properly or stem cells are not renewed then there is a problem with the communications of cells with this could also end up in chronic inflammation or even in dysbiosis, which is the relationship with the microbiome. The better we understand the molecular mechanisms that drive aging, the better we can design protocols and targeted therapies to decrease and decline the aging process. There are certain individuals that are trying to apply what is known so far to develop protocols in themselves that they could use to live longer and to reverse the aging process. For example, yeah. Brian's day starts with a program he calls Blueprint, a five hour daily routine put together by a team of 30 doctors for perfect health. After seven months of this, he's already reduced his age by over five years, setting a world record in age reversal. Basically, the question we were trying to ask scientifically was if you just basically made my body a controlled experiment, what could you do with the body? Like how much could you slow the speed of aging? I've spent millions of dollars doing the first step of measuring everything we can. So we use MRI, ultrasound, DNA methylation, microbiome, everything we can measure. And we look at the evidence and we say, what does the evidence say to do to how to achieve optimal health? And then we implement it. Even with these two years of kind of messing around with blueprints, we've dramatically slowed my speed of aging. I'm now aging at a rate slower than the average 10 year old we've been able to do that with just two years of playing around, it's reasonable for us to say, what can we be in 20 years? It's nothing but genetics. 
We have come across this term several times. Yes, it is. But not because of the reason that you think. I think many of us can recognize this famous Brad Pitt movie, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, where the protagonist, Brad Pitt, actually aged in reverse. And then we know all what happens. But what people sometimes don't know, the opposite disease of someone aging actually faster is true. So let's meet Sam. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Sam and I just turned 17. Hi everyone. My name is Michiel van der Weert and I'm 19 years old. At the age of five, I was diagnosed with bacteria. I'm Harry, I'm 20 years old. I'm the only boy in the world with atypical progeria syndrome. And children with progeria are born with a T at a single position in their genome where you have a C, with the devastating consequence that these wonderful, bright kids age very rapidly and pass away by about age 14. Worldwide, there are only 144 kids with progeria, and the average age is 12. So I am, as I like to put it, seven years in overtime. Doctors once told them children like Sam lived to about 13. We were with him just days before his most recent birthday. Sam lived to 17. I had a friend. She didn't have progeria, but she had something similar. And unfortunately, she passed away when she was 25. I invite everyone to watch these TED Talks and videos from the people I, show, I just show you below. And we can learn a lot from them. They try to enjoy their life every day with what they have. And while well, we have learned a lot scientifically from them, we should also learn we are the lucky ones. We are the ones that have all the tools. Luckily, hopefully most of us doesn't have this mutation that ages faster. So there's a lot we can do. And with some lifestyle changes, we can even achieve more to increase our health span and our lifespan. So let's give it a try. <laughs>